can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the the WWE opportunity and how it uh, kind of came about? So, I was wrestling in OBW. Um, I had been brought in by Al Snow, and um, I was a heel. I was kind of like a fun heel. I really, I really, as as much as I sort of patterned my my self after Jake, you know, I I didn't want to be a knockoff, so I made sure to really you know, try to paint with a broad, broad brush and a broad canvas, wide canvas. And I, again, very cowboy Bob, very Adrian Adonis, Buddy Rose, different guys like that. And so I was kind of a fun, uh, uh, flamboyant, mean kick punch heel where my high flying was sort of more like the cowboy Bob and a- Adrian Adonis, Buddy Rose, where I would take the big backdrops and excuse me, the clotheslines over the top ropes. And I was fun to hate very much and I, that's where i really uh piper was a big influence for that you know like most loved guy or most hated guy in 85 most loved guy in 86 you know so i figured if i could just be fun to watch i would by proxy you know amplify whoever i was in the ring with and so i got i got my call uh to go up from uh nova from mike bucci uh, to wwe in the summer of or yeah in the summer of uh 07 and i, I went back to canadia waited on my work visa and I got shipped down to Florida, and that's when everything kind of got started from there. I wrestled as Sin Bodhi, and then uh, they wanted to me, they wanted me to come up with some names as they were bringing people up. I think they had sent a few people up, and Vince was just not happy with them, and he would send them back down or can them or whatever. And I guess he had sent a memo down to uh, Dusty and Steve Kern and Dr. Tom to look. I want five dudes that are ready right now, that are TV ready, that I don't have to change anything on. And uh, the, there was five people brought up. I was flattered to be the first one on that pick of the litter. It was me, Dolph Ziggler, Jack Swagger, Jake Hager, uh, Byron Saxton, and Steve Lewington, a.k.a. DJ Gabriel. And uh, so I went up there, and they, they asked me to pick from a list of names, which Sin Bodhi was on my top of my list. Uh, but then they, they never looked at the list, and Vince got into his head. that He knew I was a carnival guy, a sideshow guy, which Jake had sort of really – put over the fact he was look man vince likes the carnival stuff let's and you're doing that so let's really find a way to mesh the two together and don't just come to the ring like a circus guy wrestle like a collegiate guy or wrestle like a bar fighter and then leave like a circus guy you've got to be the whole thing for real from curtain to curtain and even and past the curtain when i got that call up i remember jake saying and they you know they didn't want me to be somebody they wanted me to be kazarni jay uh, vince liked the kazarni name he said hey can you speak Carney and I said, yes, this is like his and he goes, well, good. You're going to speak Carney and your name's going to be Kazarni. It's Carney for Carney. You get a kid. And I said, yes, sir. I get it. And I'll absolutely do my best. And I just remember Jake in my head to this day. And he said it over the years. He never lets me forget it. And I don't ever want him to. I don't ever want somebody to placate me or handle me with kid gloves. He always tells me stiff, stiffly, honestly, we're, we're, we're working stiff right there. Yeah. <laughs> The only time I do is when I watch that T-shirt and listen to Jake is he said, if you're going to fail, fail as yourself. And I didn't. I let uh, a wonderful company that I grew up watching and, and was enamored with as much as I was enamored with Jake. Let me be Kazarni. And I was respectful for the opportunity, but I was too green and too dumb and too polite. To say, Mr. McMahon, sir, please let me be somebody. Please let me be a villain. Please let me do what you hired me to do. And I didn't say that. I just said, yes, sir because my rose colored glasses were just saddled to my face. And I was just happy to be there. I wanted to make everybody happy. I was the last opinion that I was listening to. Uh, you know, I listened to other producers and wrestlers and different people. And Jake was the only one that called it straight, said, be yourself. He was and if that scares the shit out of everybody, so be it. And when I got my release, he said, you failed because you weren't yourself. You didn't fail because Arnie failed and you let everybody else tell you what to do. And that was a mistake. Because you're smart, Jake. You don't know what to do with that. In, in in your experience with Vince, Jake, if if uh, if Sin had gone to him and said what what he said here now, uh, hey, I don't want to be Kazarni, I want to be Sin Bodhi. Do you think that Vince would have listened to something like that? Yes, you do. Oh yeah. So we as fans always yeah. kind of get the impression that he's very much set in his ways. What gives you the impression that well, he's he's set in his ways? But what you do is, is you say yes to him. But you then you go out and do your shit. Mm. So when I when I had that that first like so I wrestled MVP and a bunch of other guys like Chavo, it's really great guys, you know, on on a million 
live events for, for WWE, for SmackDown. But when I had that TV debut, I literally walked through the curtain and, and Dr. Tom was sitting at the table and I just kind of looked at him and I was just like, huh? And Doc, you know, all his wisdom looked right back at me and went, oh, and I thought, holy shit, if the good doctor doesn't know what the fuck is going on, <laughs> then I'm in deep water. And I went out there and uh, John Laronitis had helped sort of produce that. And respectfully, I just, again, I just listen. Uh, you know, he's the, the boss. I'm listening to him. And it's just going against every instinct that I had. And as we were out there, I, I, I want to say I was just kind of spit out into a, a MVP storyline last minute because Vince just wanted me on TV. And he told the writers, get him on TV now. And uh, instead of me, you know, beating the shit out of somebody in two minutes and get, having some grandiose debut, I squeaked out a 10-minute finish on a guy on a losing streak, who was amazing. MVP's awesome, you know, but just the storyline was that. And so I kept on getting put down in the hold, and, and, he, and the ref was telling, telling us on the headpiece, Johnny wants you back in a hold. And I just remember saying, la, 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 I can't hear you. I'm getting up. I'm going to do some stuff. I can't. I just, he's like, no, 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 but, but Johnny, I'm like, I didn't hear nothing. And I'm, I called some spot, whatever I, whatever I was doing. And I just I let my instincts take over. And, and I think the match was was fine, but it just wasn't the match that that match needed to be. That match needed to be, again, me beating the shit out of some really lovable baby face in, inside of two minutes. And it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I think I, it's above my booking, above my pay grade, but 